Plants vs Zombies is a game that is near and dear to my heart. This critically acclaimed tower defense game developed and published by PopCap Games is one of the most popular games of its genre. It has won several awards in various categories, including Strategy Game of the Year in 2010. Sadly, we're playing the sequel. Plants vs Zombies 2 It's about time is a game that I played a ton when it initially released. I would play it on our family tablet every morning before I had to go to school, and I was in love with it. I stopped playing around the time of Far Future's release, as it got far too difficult for 10 year old me. I've recently been binging Plants vs Zombies challenge videos, and it got me thinking, what if I make my own? So before we begin, I would like to give a massive shout out to Shagrod's Cave for ultimately inspiring me to make this. His PVC2 with only nuts series is genuinely one of the funniest things on this platform, and I highly recommend you check it out. And with that little spiel out of the way, let's go over some basic rules, shall we? I won't use any ranged plants, so say goodbye to that pesky peak shooter of yours. We're embracing hand-to-hand -hand combat here. I will also refrain from using any sunflowers unless it's absolutely necessary, such as in produce X amounts of sun levels. I won't level up any plants outside of the mandatory pea shooter level up at the beginning, as I feel like it'll make the challenge way too easy. Plus, I don't even like this stupid mechanic. But if we're not allowed to use any ranged plants, what are we allowed to use? I'll be going by the in-game almanac, so if a plant's range category says close, tau, or 3x3, three three, they're fair game. I'm still debating on if we're allowed to use plants that say touch, such as the chili bean, but that's a problem for future me, so if you have any suggestions for future me, let me know down below. Our challenge officially begins on the fourth day of the tutorial, where we unlock our very first usable plant, the potato mine. But this level is incredibly easy due to, you know, this being part of the tutorial. Day 5 starts us off with a bunch of pre-planted plants, but be honest with me. Who needs any of those when you've got potato mines? Once we've officially beaten the final wave, we obtain the hot sauce, which our neighbor Dave pours all over his taco. After which, he swallows it whole. Apparently, Dave's taco is so good that he decides to go back in time just so that he can eat it again. Welcome to the cell stage, the genesis of life itself. You know, maybe we've gone too far back. Funnily enough, I originally wanted to put an entire spore playthrough here, but maybe some other time. A anyway, welcome to ancient Egypt. Penny, please, that's that's my line. They want us to plant food tutorial, which was quite easy. Although I was forced to use one of my lawnmowers, as I became a tiny bit o overzealous with my plant food. Go, my children, blow them to smithereens. <laughs> anyway. Day 2 is the power-up tutorial, which is as boring and as easy as it sounds. Is it just me, or is the flick power-up incredibly awkward to use? Day 3 introduces us to the bane of my existence, the camel zombie. But what's so bad about this thing? Well, we can only defeat it by either getting extremely lucky with Potato Mine's plant food, or by losing one of our mowers. Safe to say, I chose the latter. Day 4 is a conveyor belt level, and coincidentally, the bloomerang tutorial, which we can't use. Let's just ignore this one. Day 5 is yet another level where we're forced to use one of our mowers, as we simply can't deal with the camel zombies effectively. But hey, at least this level unlocks iceberg lettuce. Finally, a plant that we can actually use! Day 6 is another conveyor belt level, and while I would love to do it with just potato mines and iceberg lettuces, we simply don't get enough of them. We're skipping this one. Alright, welcome to Day 7. This level is extremely difficult, as the camel zombies just won't stop coming. There's just too many of them at once for me to effectively deal with them. I would consistently lose my lawnmowers right before the final wave, which, admittedly, frustrated me beyond belief. I quickly became convinced that this level was simply impossible. Until I discovered a neat little trick. If I plant the potato mine right in the middle of the camel formation and use plant food on it, it'll arm immediately, blowing most of them up in the process. This was honestly such a good discovery, as it made it clear that I just needed some better RNG. After 40 straight minutes of attempts, I had this lucky final wave where a camel spawned in the only lane that still had lawnmowers, earning me and the Spud Squad this hard-fought victory. What an awful level. After beating this level, it became quite apparent that I needed something better than just potato mines, so I started filling out surveys and watching horrible ads for gems, until I could eventually afford the Kiwi Beast. This fella hits in a 3x3 area around himself, like Fatbeat, while becoming bigger and more powerful the more it's heard by zombies. 
It does a good amount of damage while also being quite bulky. I'm convinced that he'll be incredibly useful to us. Day 8 immediately shows off the power of the Kiwi Beast, as it makes short work of any and all zombies. This level also introduces the Tomb Racer zombie, which spawns tombstones that are supposed to block projectiles for the zombies. Which we're not using. Nice try, idiot. Day 9 goes the exact same way as Day 8, with the Kiwi Beast making short work of everything and everyone. Day 10 is yet another snooze fest due to the power of the Kiwi Beast. I'm honestly beginning to wonder if purchasing this plant was a mistake. It's genuinely such a strong plant that it's soloing levels. But that might just be because this is the very first world. Do you reckon I should limit myself to only like, I don't know, two Kiwi Beasts per level? Let me know. Day 11 is one of the many levels where the game picks plants for you, and luckily for us, we get Potato Mine. And while difficult, this level was perfectly doable with just Potato Mines. Day 12 introduces the Sarcophagus Zombie, which is visually one of my favorites, but it's no match for the beast that is, the Kiwi Beast. That sounded better in my head. Day 13 introduces the Mold Colony objective, which are specific tiles that we are prohibited to plant on. It doesn't really affect us though, since the Kiwi Beast is always front and center. There's um genuinely nothing else to add. This level was a cakewalk. I, uh, I I guess I like the little animation the mold does when you try to plant stuff on top of them. That's kind of cute. Beating day 13 also unlocks the Bonk Choy, which is another plant that we can actually use. Literally the only thing I wrote down about day 14 is the word easy. So uh, do with that info what you will. Day 15 introduces us to another new objective, where we'll have to protect the endangered plants. It really wasn't that difficult, but it was nice having sunflowers for once. I also found out that the Kiwi Beast and Bonk Choy work quite well together, particularly in taking down the Sarcophagus Zombie. Day 16 was a total breeze, with nothing much going on. The only thing worth mentioning is that I noticed that the Tier 2 Kiwi Beast sounds just like those HELLO signs in Dark Souls. Hello. Day 17 introduces the Never Have More Than X Plants objective, which is a pretty interesting concept in and of itself, but we're already kind of nailing that due to the nature of this challenge. This was yet another easy level. Day 18 is a Lost Stand level, which is genuinely one of my favorite gimmicks in this entire game. We get this nice Kiwi Beast and Bonk Choy pattern going, and we let him rip. You can probably guess how it went. Day 19 combines the Mold Colony and the Never Have More Than X Plants objective, which, again, would have been pretty cool if it wasn't for a certain piece of fruit. The Kiwi Beast truly is unstoppable. Day 20 is another Protect the Plants level with Sunflowers, which, as you've probably guessed, is another easy victory. Day 21 has three pre-picked plants that we sadly can't use, like, at all. Despite that, this level is yet another cakewalk. Day 22 is yet another mold colony and never have more than X plants level. And instead of coming up with another way of calling this level easy, I'll let ChatGPT do it. Hey ChatGPT, what's a fun way of saying I breeze through it? You should say, I sail through it, or I cruise through it, as alternatives to express that something was completed easily or effortlessly. There you go, I sailed through this level. Day 23 brings back the Gargantua zombie, which we haven't seen since day 5. Hey. And while I am perfectly capable of dealing with literally every other zombie in this level, I've had to use a lawnmower to deal with the Gargantua. Surely this won't become a problem later on in the game. Day 24 is another last stand level, and while we have a much, much uglier setup than last time, it went down the exact same way. And finally, Day 25 is a conveyor belt level against Dr. Zomboss. And while the game does give you Bonk Choy, you don't get nearly enough to beat Zomboss with it. And while anticlimactic, I end up defeating Zomboss the normal way. And with that, we're done with Ancient Egypt. I'll admit, this world was quite easy, with Day 7 being the only true outlier. Granted, I didn't expect Kiwi Beast to be this powerful. I imagine it would have been a whole lot more difficult if I purchased any other Gmian plant. But yeah. I hope this video was at least somewhat entertaining. I know this is a lot different from my normal content, but I just really felt like making this. And um, let me know if you'd like to see a part 2. Now if you'll excuse me, I've got a spore run to finish.